Hi everyone, this is Dr. Poe, and today I want to give you kind of the shortcut method for determining molecular geometries. And we're going to be doing this using the Lewis dot symbols. And so, just as a quick reminder, what Lewis dot symbols are is so based on they're based on the valence electrons. And it's shown as a dot on the, on the chemical symbol. Okay. And so the kind of the rules for assigning these, so we'll kind of look at carbon, which has four valence electrons, because it's in group four. We'll look at nitrogen, which has five valence electrons, because it's in group five, and oxygen, it has six valence electrons, okay? So the rules for assigning and making these Lewis dot symbols are you add one valence electron to each side. So kind of imagine that this is a big square and you just add one for each side, clockwise, counterclockwise, starting at the top, starting at the bottom, doesn't matter. But you do that until all the valence electrons are on there. So this is what the Lewis dot structure for carbon looks like. Boom. We see all four valence electrons there. When so we start with one dot per side, one, two, three, and four. And for nitrogen, which has five valence electrons, we're just gonna start adding more. So this is what a five valence electron arrangement would look like. And anything in this group number is gonna have the same uh, arrangement of valence electrons. And similar for oxygen, this has six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six and so that's what that would look like so you just keep going around until all the valence electrons are assigned now we're going to so these valence electrons are what's look what's used in bonding so let's go ahead and name so anything that is alone this is available for bonding single electrons want to form bonds, they want to pair up. And remember, two pairs, two dots, is gonna equal a single bond. Four dots is gonna equal a double bond. And six dots is gonna equal a triple bond. Okay, so, but those are only the ones that are unpaired. The paired up ones, do this in blue, those are called lone pairs. Leave them alone, they're already in a pair. So we see lone pairs here, here, and here. Leave them alone, they're already in a pair. Lone pairs. Okay, so these are not gonna be used for bonding because they're already paired up. Only the non-bonded ones want to form bonds. The non-paired up ones want to form bonds. Okay, so that's gonna be important because we've got this really kind of handy dandy table and this kind of table, I'm gonna label it the table, table of molecular geometries. So now that we know how to draw our valence electrons, which we know is the key to determining shapes, molecular geometries, So now that we know how to do our Lewis dot symbols, we can figure out the molecular geometry of anything just remembering this table. And this table is going to be focused on the central atom. Central atom of any molecule. Okay, so that's what this table is all about. So we're going to say number of atoms, and that's bonded to central atom. So if there's just like one atom bonded, so the total number of atoms would be two in that case. It kind of doesn't matter anything else. The shape is going to be linear. that's going to kind of look like this. So here's one, it's bound to something else. Anything you have just two atoms total, then that's always going to be linear. Okay, and then we're going to look at the number 
of lone pairs. Okay? So if we have two atoms bound to the central atom, so we have three total atoms here, and no lone pairs, we're still going to be linear. And it's going to look like this. Because remember, lone pairs cause things to bend, but only when they're on the central atom. If we have two atoms attached to the lone pair, so three atoms total, and one or two lone pairs on the central atom, then that's going to be bent. So on our central atom, we're going to have one set of lone pairs or two. It's going to shift everything down. So that's what bent looks like. Three total atoms, two attached to the center, and then one or two lone pairs. So let's just get those a different color. Oops, so you can really see that that's lone pairs. Okay, back to our table. If we have three atoms... So four total, three atoms attached, attached to the center, so four total, with no lone pairs, that's going to end up completely flat, because lone pairs on the central atom is what makes bending in 3D shapes. So this is going to be trigonal, planar, because it's flat, planes are flat, the geometry. Okay. <clears throat> If we have three atoms attached to the central atom, or four total atoms, and we have one or more lone pairs, that is going to be pyramidal, or trigonal pyramidal. Like a pyramid is a 3D shape. And so what that's going to look like is here's our central atom, here's a lone pair, that's going to cause every, all these other attached atoms to kind of scoot away from those electrons and bend those down. So a pyramid is a 3D shape. And then if you have four atoms attached to a central atom, so five atoms total, it does, you're not going to have any space for lone pairs. That is going to be tetrahedral. And what that's going to look like is here's our central atom, and these are going to kind of branch off like that. So it's its 3D shape. Okay, so if you know this table, you are going to be all set for determining the molecular geometry. So let's just kind of do a couple quick practices just to test the waters. So CO2, that was done long way in another video. Let's just te test this out. So... There is one carbon, and there are two oxygens, so that gives three atoms total. And we know that our central atom is going to be carbon, because that's the one that there's only one of. So what we're going to do next is we're going to draw out the Lewis dot structure of carbon because that's how we're going to see if there's any lone pairs. There are not. There are no lone pairs on carbon. Okay, so now we have all the information that we need. So the next, we can also draw out the oxygens with their lone, oh, sorry, Lewis dot structures. I'm losing it today. And again, it doesn't matter where the dots are. We have two lone pairs and two singlets. Okay, so that's kind of the arrangement it's going to take. And if you kind of look like, oh, this is going to pair with that one. This one's going to pair with that one. We can kind of pair up the unpaired. And we're going to end up with carbon. Two bonds over here. Here's bond one. Here's bond two. So that's going to make a double bond to this oxygen, which still has two lone pairs. And same thing over here. Carbon, oxygen, two lone pairs. Okay, so that's great. So now we know total atoms is three. We know that there's a central atom, two atoms attached to it. One, two. So let's use our, and no lone pairs. So let's use our chart. So we have, in a new color, we have two atoms attached. Uh-oh. So now we got options. 
three atoms total, still got options. Number of lone pairs on the central atom is zero because carbon has no lone pairs on its central atom, so the shape of this is linear. And that matches with the long way that we did in another video. So that's a great example. Let's do one more example just to drive this home. Let's do the example of H2O. This also has three total atoms because there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, so there are three atoms total. Oxygen is the lone, is the central atom here, so that's where we're going to start. So oxygen has two lone pairs, again, doesn't matter where they are, and two single electrons that can be used for bonding. So let's arrange the hydrogen, which has one valence electron, right by the oxygens. And we can see that these two are going to form a bond, and these two are going to form a bond. So following this, we're going to have an oxygen with two sets of lone pairs, single bond to hydrogen, single bond to hydrogen after those unpaired electrons pair up. So now let's look at this. So just like in the last example, we have two atoms attached to the central atom, three atoms total, but now we've got lone pairs. We've got two lone pairs on the central atom, so this is going to be the bent configuration. And so these lone pairs on the oxygen have bent it down. So this is going to be bent configuration. And I hope that this is helpful, and if you really learn this chart, and you learn this kind of quick and easy method, it's going to answer a lot of the very basic problems, but it does not really apply to like advanced or exceptions to the rule. But anything for the class that I'm teaching, this is all set. Have a great rest of your day.